I guess people look at the outside and they look at the way St Paul's row. I yeah. mean, the guys in, in America were talking about the way you row. Robbie Manson was talking about the way you row. I mean, you, you got coached by Harry Marne. Yes. Um, there's a lot of sort of stuff made about how Harry Marne used to coach crews. Yeah. You know, I know he worked with Robin Williams, who's yeah. here. Yeah. And maybe there's a bit of similarity, you might see that. But, you know, now let's talk about how you coach boys or how you got boys to move the way you think a boat should be moved. Um, I mean, again, it's like I think it's like pretty organic, like, and a lot of it's come from learning. I've, I've, you know, I think one of the key things is for me is like you're always you're always learning. I mean, I don't I don't claim to know I know the right way or I know everything. It's just like I've, I've got an idea in my mind that how I want things to row. Whether it's the right way, I'm not. You know, I believe it is, but like, you know, I think I'm open to like to continue to learn, and I think. You know, when I was when I was rowing, I was I was lucky enough to have two years being coached by Harry. Um, you know, I was in my mid twenties. Like, did I ever think I'd go into coaching? Like, no. Um, and you know, in hindsight, I wish I paid more attention. Right? Because <laughs> 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 like the guy, the guy was just phenomenal, and I knew he was phenomenal. Like, you know, you used to go out and you row in a boat, and he would just say one or two things, and like, and he seemed to know. What you were feeling, he seemed to know. Like you know, if you just do this and yeah. push here, and he, he seemed to know what you were feeling, and, and and he seemed to sort of feel what the boat was doing or see what the boat was doing, and he had a, a very good way of like communicating to you as an individual and as a crew at the same time to be able to make small adjustments, and you would just go in, and all of a sudden, like he wouldn't even say something, and you feel the boat moving a little bit better already. Like it just it just because you sort of inherently believed in him. And what he was saying, or not about to say, that yeah. it just had a like a big influence on, on the way things going. But as I said, like when I was back then, I didn't, you know, I knew that, but I just like, you know, I was just living in that moment of rowing and just didn't really think about what he was doing or how he was doing. I had a rough idea yeah. of like, you know, it was very sort of, very relaxed, very sort of, you know, just he, he spoke a lot about, you know. How you place the blade, so you're not you're not missing anything. You just you're in, but everything was just just quite relaxed, and I was aware of that. But I didn't really go into too much depth of how he did it or what we were doing. And I think with time, then when I sort of started coaching, I sort of had that in my mind, but it wasn't really a clear picture of what it was, and also um, how to put that across. Um, and I think you know, like it's been a long time. You know, I started coaching at Latimer with with Brian and Dougie, uh, like. Like I don't know, like fourteen years ago, fourteen years ago, All right? And then, and then it's just like it was it was a natural a natural progression. Um, so where do, where would then, you start? I mean, what what do you what what are the key focuses that you could say? Um, well, I mean, we do a lot of stuff like now, like on the land, like we do a lot of how we move on like, the RP three. So the RP three, do you want to yeah, talk I about mean, that? I, I personally really like the RP three. I didn't I didn't like the old one because we used to use the old one with Harry. Um, and it was just really rickety and used to like rip the crap out of my hamstrings. I'd find it really like awkward. But I think the way it is now and the way it's designed, like like I really like it. I, I use it a lot myself. I sit and I do like three RP3s a week. Just I was struck, but you, you were talking about the, how the inside hand works. And how yeah, it's just cause it, because like, it's not like blind miles. If you go on the, the concept two, you're just like, you know, you're just working on your physiology. Like you're just, you know, there's no sort of um, bigger picture on like, you know how you're moving, like what what the boat's doing under you, how you change direction. Like it's just, it's. I mean, you can do it to a certain extent, but it's it's a different like movement. Like, mm. You're moving up and down rather than rather than letting the boat come to you. And I think on the RP3, like um, you you can you can think about that. And I think that's what we what we do when we're doing the a lot of the easy two is like there, there's those sessions we're all coached. You know, I'll go around and I'll, I'll coach all the boys while they're doing the easy two and. You know, try and get them moving in the way it wants to move them. And a lot of it is like how how you how you recover. Like you know, um, and when when it's on the RP3 on the water, it's like where how you recover so you don't affect the run of the boat. You know, we, we sort of move in a way which is like people think we we like we pause at the back. Yeah. Um, but it's I don't I don't coach people to pause at the back. But we'll, what we do is we just you know it's just very natural. Like we're leg driven. So we like and the stuff we do with Valeria as well. Like. He comes in and chats to the boys after we do testing, but we're we're, we're leg driven from from when your your legs are at ninety degrees, and sorry when your shins are vertical. And when we get to ninety degrees, so that movement there to there is just 
it's just like very relaxed. Like that movement there today is very relaxed and it's just almost looks quite lazy. Yeah. And then from that point, we open our back against our legs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the arms just sort of just come through and just go around. So if it's, you create your own time with acceleration. So if we do that well, it just gives the appearance that, or the appearance that we're just quite lazy and, yeah, yeah. and we're almost stopping. But it's just, you know, that, that's the way we sort of coach it through the drive. But on the recovery, it's just like we're very like light in the elbows and the knees and just quite loose and organized and just like, we let the boat come to us so the stern doesn't dip, but on the RP3, you can still be quite light in your feet and let, let the cage come to you and just push it away again. And it's, it's really simple, but it's really quite like easy and like really sympathetic movements. So how quickly do the boys pick that up? Um, do you have to do quite a lot of stuff <coughs> when they get into the... Yeah, I mean, so, the... so we do like, I do, they, they I think if you, if you took any St. Paul's boy, probably from like the top boy, if you grabbed any boy from the eight last year, if they would explain to you, like, yeah. they would be able, as a 17, 18 year old, would explain, be able to explain yeah. to you what they do. And it's because, like, I think we make them take, take ownership of how they're rowing and they understand how they're rowing. Yeah. When I was 18, like, if someone asked me how I rowed, I'd just say, you know, just pull on and yeah. make sure my blades don't touch the water. So um, I think they sort of they take ownership from how, of how they're rowing. And I think a lot of that is, is done on land on the RP3. And then when we're on the water, we're just trying to sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing. You know, too different. It's just like, right, let's move in this really sort of soft, sympathetic way, but try and do it together. And then also, you've got the added thing of you've got this thing out here that you need to yeah. put in the water and push and push the boat past the, the blade. So, and so um, how much how much work did you have to do with Calvin Sarza? You came to St Paul's in the sixth form. Yeah, he was at Scullers, but he was yeah. he was a slower sculler than he was when well, he, he, when he first joined our group. He was the slowest in the group. So, so, so what? I'm thinking, what the fuck did you do with him? Uh, <laughs> Now, I mean, the thing is, like, I think part of the thing is he, like, he was rough. Like, he was this rough diamond. He was a big, strong guy. And we'd go out sculling, and he'd just get dropped, like, out of the back. But what he had was just the, like, ability to buy into it and take responsibility. Like, he wanted to be better. Mm. Like, and he sort of bought into the culture, and he listened. And, like, you know, you sort of, you know, we've only got 12 RP3s, and we'll have, like, um, I don't know, like a, 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 a like a, a a UT2 session, like, optional, or well, we could have, like, 25 guys down. So they all run to get the RP3, and, like, you know, he'd make sure he'd be the first one on the RP3, like, right? because he yeah. knew that he, he would get the best out of him rather than some guys just can't be bothered with it, so I'll go on the static. So yeah. he was just one of these guys that, that took responsibility for, for what he wanted to do and how he wanted to change, and, and he responded really well to coaching. Like, he, he developed and he changed, and also, like, um, he was strong but not very well trained. So yeah. um, he would sort of on his thresholds he would coast. Like we do half hour, we do half hour. We don't do it like GB like half hour at twenty. We do it a higher rate because I think if you do it at twenty, you, you row in a too physical way. Yeah. So we do we do half hour at a higher rate just so we can get moving in more of a natural way. Um, and we do all our threshold on the static. But you know he would coast and then have these dramatic finishes, and it was because he wasn't he didn't have that yeah. sort of endurance. Base. So when he built that endurance base, he. Um, I think he was he had the level to be able to like like work at a better like a higher yeah. level and yeah. you know with that as well you you can develop your technique um, you know in a in a better way because if you're if you're unfit when you're going rowing it's hard it's hard to sort of row the right intensity and row well so I think everything sort of interlinked and goes like hand in hand and I mean how do you feel as it because the kid won the scholar's head for God's sake yeah. <laughs> When you see the kids winning events like that, the four said, how do you feel as a coach? Uh, I was just really proud of them, really. Yeah. I, you know, um, I mean, I think it's like, I don't know, like, it is what it is. So I don't, I'm really proud of them. I don't, yeah. I don't take, like, I've helped them on their way, and so have other people, like, you know, like Doug, like, you know, Donald Leggett. Let's talk like, about Donald for a little um, bit. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, so, I, so what is the thing with you and Donald? How does that? Uh, Donald is like. I mean, a very good friend of mine. Like, is, well, I've got to know him over the last few years, and well, since 2015, I started working with him. And like, Donald's an untapped resource. Like, he's he's a, he's got a very good eye, um, and I I completely trust him, um, and we work well together. Like, I bring in Donald like once a week from Christmas. Yeah. Um, and Donald will come in like and come out in our games half, and I'll just you know I'll, I'll brief him to what's been going on and what I think and. And, and then we'll go and do a session. I'll, I'll let Donald coach it and I'll sit in the launch with him. Um, and I think over the time, we've 
over the over the last four or five years, I think we've just become like quite close in what we do. So like we're on the same page. So like Donald will go out with the boat. I might not have briefed him like totally what's going on, and he'll just pick up and say the things that I've been saying to him the day before. And it's quite reassuring yeah. that you know technically we're on the same page and the boys are getting the same thing. So everyone's like singing from the same same yeah. song sheet. And I think it's it's you know I think I've learned from Donald as well. And that's what I was saying like <coughs> earlier that you're always developing and always learning. And you know I wouldn't bring in someone you know like to sort of to help and learn from who wrote a completely different style. I think yeah. you've got to have that that map in your mind of how you want to row. Like, you know, like if you think to Spracklin, like his eights yeah. that were really physical and like were sort of really back ended and all yeah, 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 down. Yeah. I wouldn't I would I'm not sure I'd invite someone who had a completely reverse <laughs> idea, but having someone who who is like has the same sort of like image in your mind of what you're rowing, I think it works really well. Yeah. So so you know, Donald's great. Like, um, you know, he's he's a good good resource, and the boys find him hilarious. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so, so that's always a bit of fun as well. Yeah. yeah.